It is important to start your workout in the right frame of mind, breathing correctly. The easiest way to do this is by chanting OM. Sit in any comfortable cross-legged posture on the ground, close your eyes. Breathing normally, push the air down to your stomach. Ideally, your chest shouldn't move at all. Now breathe in deeply and exhale with the OM sound. The first three seconds should be the vocalization of the O with your mouth open. Then close your mouth and let the mmm sound continue for as long as your breath allows. You should feel a deep vibration running through most of your skull. Repeat thrice. Keep your eyes closed and remember to keep breathing normally in between the deep breaths before each OM recitation. Chanting OM calms you, focusing your mind inward. Back Asanas As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. Later with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Shavasan or Corpse Posture Lie on your back, feet together and pointing outwards, arms by your sides. Close your eyes. Breathe in deeply. Increase the distance between your legs, feet still pointing outward, heels touching the ground. Place your arms so that they are not in contact with any part of the body, palms facing upwards. As you exhale, attempt to release all tension in the body. Visualize your body and consciously relax every part of it. You can practice this asana at any time. More importantly, it completely rejuvenates the body. The Shavasana is also the default relaxation posture for all exercises performed on the back. Coupled with the OM recitation, it means that the body and the mind are ready for yoga. As beginners, it makes sense to relax for about 10 seconds after every single posture. Ardhahalasana with one leg, the half plow posture. From Shavasana, bring your legs together and your arms to your sides, palms facing downward. Start raising your right leg without bending your leg at the knee. Stretch your foot and your toes outward. Raise the leg to a 90 degree angle from the body and hold it there for as long as it's comfortable. Remember to keep breathing normally, slowly release and bring your leg back to the floor. Repeat with the other leg. This is the Ardhalasan, the half plow posture because the body resembles the plow in the final position. It's excellent for the legs, the abdomen and the lumbar region. It also tones the thighs and the calves and stretches out the hamstrings and the hips and increases blood flow to the kidneys, the pancreas and the intestines. Relax. Breathe. Give yourself 10 seconds in Shavasana. Uttan Padasana, the raised legs pose. From Shavasana, bring your legs together and your arms to your sides. Place your palms under your hips. Start raising both your legs without bending them at the knee. Stop at 30 degrees from the floor and hold for five breaths. Similarly, stop at 60 degrees and finally at 90 degrees from the floor. Hold for five breaths each time. Slowly release, stopping at both the 60 and the 30 degree mark. Remember to keep breathing. Uttan Padasana is very effective for the entire abdomen. It stretches out the thoracic cavity and the entire back. Arthapavan Muktasana with one leg, the leg lock pose. From Shavasana, bring your legs together and your arms to your sides. Bend the right leg at the knee. Bring the thigh as close to your abdomen as possible. 
bring both arms around the right leg, locking your fingers just below the knee joint. The other leg remains straight, still on the ground. Keep the foot relaxed. Press the thigh into the abdomen. Slowly release in the reverse order. Repeat with the other leg. This asana is excellent for indigestion. It's a great stretch for the abdomen, the hips and the thighs, leaving the lower body turned and supple. It helps in relieving back pain and has a substantial impact on the pelvic joint. You'll already have started to notice that the exercises seem to occur in pairs. Most exercises are complementary, reversing the muscular stretches of the previous exercise, working on the complete set of muscles for each body part. Setu Bandhasan, the bridge pose. Bring your legs together and your arms to your sides. Now slide your feet towards you, as close to your buttocks as possible, with the soles remaining on the ground so that your knees are pointing towards the ceiling. Grasp each ankle with a respective hand, leaving your soles flat on the ground and holding onto your ankles, lift your pelvic region off the ground while breathing in. Tuck your shoulders in, make sure that you're well balanced. Once in the final position, breathe normally. Hold for as long as comfortable. Exhale and slowly return to the ground. Stretch your legs and relax. This is an excellent workout for the muscles of the back and the hamstrings. Because it directs blood to the brain, it's very effective for combating depression, stress and insomnia. Kattivakrasana The spinal twist on the back. From Shavasana, bring your legs together and your arms to your sides. Place your arms along the line of your shoulders perpendicular to the body. With a distance of about two feet between your feet, raise your knees and leave the soles of your feet on the ground. Twist your lower body to the right, attempting to get both the knees to touch the ground while turning your head all the way to the left. Hold. Slowly come back to the center with your knees and your head. Repeat for the other side. This asana gives you a great stretch all the way up the body and your spine in particular. It is a great help with the neck and back muscles and is excellent for the stomach. It's particularly effective in fighting the fat around your waist. Nokasana, the boat pose. From the base position on the ground, Breathe in deeply. Raise both legs up, trying to bring them up as high as possible. Now raise both arms, keeping them straight, attempting to reach towards your toes. Attempt to bring your body as close to a 45 degree angle as possible, without bending your knees or your elbows. Breathe normally. Hold. Gently exhale as you release. Take particular care that you avoid any jerky movements while executing this asana. Nokasana is one of the asanas that's excellent for fighting the fat around your waist. It's very good for the stomach as well as strengthening the back and the leg muscles. It also helps in regulating the kidneys. It's very helpful in cases involving diabetes and dyspepsia. It also improves concentration. Chakrasana, the wheel pose. While lying on your back, bring your knees up and your feet as close to your buttocks as possible, the soles of your feet on the ground. Spread your legs so that they are shoulder width apart. Lift your arms, bend your elbows, and bring your hands to the ground so that your fingers are touching your shoulders, your palms on the floor. Breathe in. Slowly, using the force of your hands and legs, push yourself up until your body is fully extended in an inverted U and you are standing on your toes. Feel the blood rush to your head and your lungs expand and fill up. Hold for as long as is comfortable. Breathe out and let yourself down slowly. Chakrasan literally translates as the wheel posture. This asana primarily focuses on the spine, giving it a complete stretch top to bottom. And because of the spinal stretch, the posture works on the nervous system, 
It also stretches out the chest, opening out the lungs, helping in deeper and more controlled breathing. It is excellent for the stomach, and because of the increased blood flow to the lower back, helps in regulating the kidneys. It is excellent for the heart as well, because it stretches the aorta. It obviously also turns and builds the muscles of the hands and the feet. Asanas on the stomach. As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. Later with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Lie on your stomach, legs straight, your feet resting easily, slightly apart. Keep your arms by your sides. In neutral position, keep your head turned to one side. Makrasana, the crocodile pose. This is the relaxation pose for all exercises performed on the stomach. Lie prone on the floor, spread your legs wide with the toes pointing outwards and the heels pointing inwards to touch the ground. Bend your right elbow and place your right palm in the crook of your left arm. In the same way, the left palm goes to the crook of the right arm. Place your forehead on your arms, providing support for the neck. Relaxation in this pose is good for stress-induced diseases. Ardha Shalabhasana, with one leg, the locust pose. In the base position on your stomach, slide your hands under your thighs, palms up. Inhale slowly and then raise the right leg off the floor as high as possible. Try and keep the leg straight without bending the knee or transferring weight onto the other leg or by lifting the pelvic region off the ground. Hold the posture for as long as you can hold the inhaled breath and then slowly return the leg to the floor while exhaling. Artha Shalabhasana helps in developing the quadriceps and adds tone to the abdominal muscles. It stimulates the stomach, the lower back and the intestines, helping strengthen the bladder and stretching the spine. Remove your hands from under your thighs and place the arms alongside your body. Turn your head to the side and rest. Bhujangasana, the cobra pose. Turn your head so that your chin is on the ground. Bring your arms to your side, close to your body, with your hands by your chest. Bring your legs together. Inhaling slowly, raise your head. Hold this first position. Your chest should be off the ground, but not excessively so. Always remembering that your hands are there to provide support. Avoid the temptation to transfer all your weight onto the hands. Hold, relax, return to the neutral position. For the slightly more advanced variant, start the same way. This time, however, Raise your head and chest as high as it will go. Keep your buttock muscles tight to protect your lower back. Your pelvis should remain on the floor. Hold and then let yourself down gently. The cobra pose stretches the spine, strengthens the back and arms and opens up the lungs and the thoracic cavity. It's great for the neck. Dhanurasana, the bow pose. While on the stomach, place your chin on the floor. Exhale, raise your legs and bend your knees, bringing the legs closer to you and reach back, grasping the right ankle with the right hand and the left ankle with the left hand. Inhale. Slowly rise up, pulling your ankles up and raising the thighs off the floor while simultaneously lifting your chest off the floor. Hold the breath. The weight of your body should be resting solely on your abdomen. Tilt your head as far back as possible. Hold the posture as long as you can comfortably hold your breath. Slowly exhale. Bring the knees to the floor Release the ankles and slowly bring your legs and arms back onto the ground. The Dhanurasan or the bow pose, because that is what you resemble in the final position, is considered to be one of the best postures in all of yoga.
It helps keep an individual in great shape. It restores flexibility to the spine. Regular practice will relieve lower back pain and release tension and strain in the upper back and neck area. The alternating stretching and releasing of the abdominal muscles increases blood flow to this area. It's great for menstrual problems and it's great for turning the thighs and the buttocks. Return now to Shavasana for 30 seconds allowing your body to relax completely. Standing Asanas As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. Later with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Tarasana with finger lock, the palm tree pose. Standing upright with your back straight and a slight distance between your legs. Lock the fingers of both your hands and raise them as one unit above your head. Continue to try and reach upwards with your hands. Breathe in. Rise to your toes. Breathe normally. Hold the posture. Feel the stretch through every section of your body, even through the top of your head. Reverse the process on the exhale and watch your breath as it passes down from your head through your chest and stomach, legs and feet. Relax and then repeat. The focus here is on the straightness of the posture one holds, improving balance, self-awareness and breathing. Simple Prishtasana, backward bending. This is a variation of the first of the standing postures. Broaden your base by placing your feet about shoulder width apart. Make sure you are comfortable and balanced. As you breathe in, place your arms on your waist. Now bend backwards as far as you can. Use the hands as support. Be very careful not to overbalance. Exhale and return to neutral position. Although deceptively simple, this little exercise helps greatly in flexibility, conditioning the spine and the spinal muscles and in breathing better. It also prepares the body for all standing asanas. Padhastasana, forward bending. From the base position, with your feet apart again, raise your arms straight up. Bend backwards slightly. As you exhale, Allow yourself to bend forwards, starting first from the waist, then your neck and finally your head. While bending, push your hips back slightly. Touch your toes. It's okay to bend your knees if you're a beginner. Breathe in, rise and return to the neutral position. Repeat. This asana is excellent for the legs and the knee joints. It helps in loosening abdominal fat and increasing the supply of blood to the brain. These may seem like a very simple keep fit type exercise, but they really work. By now, you'll also have noticed that the workout functions in a kind of widening cycle, adding new muscle groups, but it keeps working on most things simultaneously. Standing Chakrasana, the wheel pose. Stand with your feet apart and your hands by the side of your thighs with fingers pointing downwards. Then raise one arm to the side, perpendicular to the body. Turn the palm over. Now raise the hand straight up so that it is by the side of your head. Stretch slightly. Now lean to the opposite side as much as possible until your body makes a smooth curve. Do not bend the knees. Do this while inhaling. Pause and come back to a normal standing position while exhaling. 
reverse for the other side. This is a good exercise for the spine, often correcting mild scoliosis. Because of the lateral stretch to the spine, it combats the fat around the side of the waist, your love handles. And because it's not a common stretch for the muscles along your side, it's great for physical fitness. Vrikshasana, the tree pose. While standing in Tarasana, bend the right leg at the knee, raise the right thigh and bring the sole of the right foot as high up the inside of the left thigh as possible. Balancing on the left foot, join your palms together and raise both arms over the head, keeping the elbows straight. Hold the posture as long as you can, breathing gently through the nostrils. Lower the arms and the right leg and return to the base position. Take a moment and repeat for the opposite leg. The major challenge of Rikshasana, also meaning the tree pose, is maintaining your balance. Yoga believes that the inability to balance oneself is a manifestation of a restless mind. The main benefits of this asana are increased powers of concentration. Natrajasana, Lord Shiva's pose. Stand up straight with your feet apart and your arms by your sides. Bring your left knee up off the ground and fold the leg behind you. Grasp your left foot with your left hand while simultaneously extending the right arm straight out in front of you. Find your balance. Lift your left leg as high as possible using your left arm. You will need to lean forward in order to be able to do this. Breathe gently. Keep your gaze fixed slightly above the horizon. Hold the asana as long as you can and then slowly return to standing position in reverse order. Natraj Asana takes its name from one of the dancing postures of Lord Shiva. It helps improve your sense of balance and concentration. The arch formed by the back and stretched leg aligns the vertebrae of the spine, restoring suppleness and easing strain brought on by poor posture. It turns the muscles of the thighs and the lower body. Utkatasana, the squat and rise posture. Stand up straight, your arms by your sides, your back straight and looking straight in front of you. Spread your legs so that they are shoulder width apart and turn both your knees so that the knees and the feet are facing outwards. Lower yourself to the floor slightly by bending your knees. Keeping your back straight, join your hands in a namaste and extend your arms above your head as far as they will go. Simultaneously, lower yourself by bending your knees further trying to bring your thighs parallel to the ground and keep your back straight. Hold for as long as is comfortable and release the asana in reverse order. Utkatasana is hugely beneficial for the lower body, especially for women. It helps in regulating periods and in combating urinary tract infections. And regardless of gender, it's great for knee joints, the quadriceps and the calves. It reduces fat deposits on the thighs and around the waist and turns the lower stomach. It's also marvellous for turning the butt. Veerbhadrasana, the warrior pose. Spread your legs until there's a distance of about four feet. Turn your right foot about 90 degrees to the right, making sure the entire foot is on the floor at all times. Turn your body to the right. Make sure that the left foot remains in the same position and doesn't turn with the right foot. This is a common mistake. Bring both arms in front of you, join them in a namaste. Raise your joint palms above your head, slowly bend the right knee until the thigh is parallel with the floor. Ideally, the knee should be either behind or directly over your ankle. Then while holding the posture, attempt to lean as far back as you can. Hold, remember to breathe, straighten up, Bring your joint palms back down, release, repeat with the other leg. This is known as Virbhadrasana, the warrior pose. It strengthens the legs and the arms, as well as improving balance and concentration. Sitting Asanas As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. 
Later, with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Vajrasana, the Thunderbolt Pose Vajrasana is the base position for most sitting postures. This is how you sit in Vajrasana. Begin by sitting back on your heels and placing your knees, legs and feet together. It's important that your heels do not touch. If they do, it means that your entire body weight is being placed on your ankles, which is not good for them. Place your palms on your knees and keep your back straight. Vajrasana is excellent for your legs and your digestive system. It is also one of the meditative postures. For example, one can chant Om in this posture as well. Parvatasana, the mountain pose. Sitting in Vajrasana, join the palms together in front of the chest. Raise the joint palms above your head as straight as possible. Your biceps should ideally be touching your ears. Now, stretch yourself as high as you can without your buttocks ever losing contact with your heels. Hold. As you relax, bring your still joined palms back in front of your chest before allowing your arms to return to your sides or rest on your thighs. Parvatasana means the mountain pose because you resemble the peak of a mountain. Another simple asana, it has multiple benefits. It helps in adding to the spine's flexibility and because of the sitting position, aids the lower back greatly. It's great for the thoracic cavity, the neck and shoulders, and the cervical vertebrae. Shashankasana, the hair pose. Sit in Vajrasana. Spread your knees till there's about a foot's distance. Inhale. As you exhale, bend the top half of your body forward from the hips. Stretch your arms out so they rest shoulder width apart on the ground in front of you. Relax your elbows so your arms are completely tension free. Rest your forehead on the floor in front of your knees and bring your buttocks as close as you can to your heels. Hold and repeat. Shashankasana helps calm an overactive mind. It brings fresh blood and oxygen to the head. It also tones the groin and the thighs and is the relaxation pose for all sitting asanas. Ushtrasana, the camel pose. Sit up in Vajrasana onto your knees, spreading them apart slightly. Reaching back, grasp the left ankle with the left hand and the right ankle with the right hand and stretch, arching the back and thrusting the abdomen forward. Tilt the head as far back as possible. Breathe gently. Exhale and return to the kneeling position. The Ushtrasana, like the Dhanurasana, is a powerful posture for stretching the spine, back muscles, shoulders and arms. It is best practiced later in your asana routine, when most of your muscles are limber. Lean forward gently and touch your forehead to the ground. Relax. Marjariasana, the cat pose. This is really two poses, one flowing into the other. Begin on your hands and knees. Place your hands slightly in front of your shoulders, your legs about hip width apart. As you inhale, tilt the tailbone and pelvis up and let your spine curve downward, dropping the stomach low and lifting your head up. Stretch gently. As you exhale, reverse the spinal bend, tilting the pelvis down drawing the spine up and pull the chest and stomach in. Repeat several times, transiting smoothly from one to the other. This asana is excellent for all-round spinal health. Vyagrasana, the tiger pose. In the first of the cat poses, when the spine is curved downward, inhale and raise the right leg. Bend the right leg back to create as much of an arch as possible. The sole of your right foot should be pointing towards and parallel to your neck, which is tilted up. Hold. 
Exhale and slowly bring the leg back into position. Vyagrasana means the tiger pose. It's excellent for both the abdominal muscles and the spinal nerves. It is also very good for relieving sciatica. This posture, along with the cat pose, is very beneficial for pregnant women and new mothers. This is because they are the easiest asanas to perform. Please do ensure that you check with your doctor before attempting them. Both asanas help ease, stretch and turn the vaginal passage after delivery. Yoga Mudra – The Attitude of Psychic Union Sitting in Padmasana, the lotus pose, or in a simple cross-legged posture, or even in Vajrasana, lock your fingers together behind your back so that they form a single unit. Slowly bend forward, starting from the waist, then the back, and finally the neck until your forehead touches the ground. Hold, and then slowly sit up again. This is an excellent workout for the abdominal muscles and aids in increased overall flexibility. Vakrasana, the twisting pose. Sit erect, your legs stretched out before you. Slowly fold your left leg at the knee and place the sole on the ground near your right knee. Place your left hand behind you, the palm on the ground at the distance of about 9 inches from your back, your fingers pointing backward. Then place your right hand on the outside of your left leg, the lower down the better. Turn your upper body to the left as if you're trying to peer directly behind you. Hold. While returning to the original position, first bring your neck back, then your right arm, then your left arm, and finally stretch the leg out before you. Reverse the process for the other side. This helps in increasing the elasticity of the spine digestion and aids the central nervous system. Neck and shoulder exercises. As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. Later with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Brahma Mudra, Lord Brahma's pose. Sit in any comfortable cross-legged pose on the floor and keep your spine as straight as possible. Taking care not to strain your neck and avoid jerking your head in any direction, slowly turn your head as far right as it will go. Bring back to the center. Now turn left and bring your head back to the center. Now look upward. Bring your head back to neutral position. Look down and bring your head back yet again. Repeat. This asana takes its name from the Hindu deity Brahma, the creator, who possessed the ability to see everything. This entire series of exercises is designed to create suppleness and strength in your upper back, specifically your neck, which often suffers from bad posture while sleeping or while awake. A substantial part of our lives now is spent either in front of the computer or watching television, as a consequence of which the neck is under constant strain. Shoulder Rotation Place your palms on your shoulders. Now rotate your shoulders, first clockwise, and then anti-clockwise. Try and ensure that your elbows touch lightly at the apex of every rotation. Take care not to strain or move any other part of your body. Finger lock and stretch. 
Raise your arms above your head. Now lock your fingers like Tadasana. Stretch upwards and release. Finger lock behind the neck. This is how you lock your fingers. Now place the locked fingers behind your neck and try and push your elbows as far back as they will go. This is very good for the thoracic vertebrae. Arm stretch. Bring your hands up in front of you. Now take them out to the sides. Slowly force your arms back behind you. Go as far back as is marginally uncomfortable. Release by bringing your arms back to level to your shoulders, then in front of you, and then back to your sides. Regardless of what we do, However careful we are, the neck and the shoulders always get ignored. Yoga is one of the very few exercise programs that devotes so much time and such specific focus to the neck, the shoulders and the upper arms. You are not just going to look better, you are going to feel a lot better. Pranayam As a beginner, do not attempt to do more than one repetition for each particular asana. Later with practice, you can go to two or three repetitions per asana, but never more than that. Kapalbhati, rapid exhalation. Make sure that you have not eaten for at least a couple of hours before carrying out this breathing exercise. Sit in any comfortable cross-legged pose, breathe in, then, with a short, sharp contraction of the lower abdominal muscles, expel air out of the nostrils. Then, totally relax the abdomen, allowing yourself to inhale. Repeat in rapid succession. If you are doing this for the first time, don't attempt it more than five times. Eventually, over time, you should aim for at least ten exhalations per inhalation. Don't try more than three sets. Keep the rest of your body as relaxed as possible. This is a pure detoxification exercise. Anulom Vilom Alternate Nostril Breathing Fold the index and the middle finger of the right hand inward and extend the thumb and the little finger. Seal the right nostril with the thumb and breathe in through the left nostril. Hold your breath for a beat. Transfer the fingers, blocking the left nostril with the little finger and breathe out through the right nostril attempting to take as long exhaling as you did inhaling. Pause for a beat and now breathe in through the same right nostril. Hold for a beat. Transfer the fingers again, breathing out through the left nostril this time. This is one cycle. You should aim to do five at the very least. Not only does this ensure that you are breathing clearly through both nostrils, but radically enhances the supply of oxygen to the brain. It's excellent for sinus patients and works surprisingly well at calming oneself down. It is also an excellent preparation for meditation. Brahmri, the humming bee breath. The point of this pranayam is to hum like a bee, setting up a deep vibration in your skull. Cover your eyes and block your ears this will give you a far stronger sense of the vibrations. The hum is achieved by chanting Om without vocalizing the O. This helps calm and focus the mind, but because it also vibrates the throat strongly, it has a profound impact on the thyroid gland, increasing metabolism, balancing hormonal secretion, and helping serotonin release. Pranayam exercises help prepare for meditation. They improve concentration, reduce stress, exercise the heart and the lungs, and tone the nervous system. 
but always remember that their true potential is realized when the body has been through the asanas first. The workout is now almost complete. Because yoga functions in a cyclical form, overlapping and building on each successive exercise, working on the body exhaustively, we return to where we began, all chanting. Congratulations! You have just finished your yoga workout. Welcome to the new you.